cutie pie. How was school? Excellent. Do you think you're strong enough to help Mama move this table? Sure, Mama. Ooh, look how you just lifting it like it's light as a feather. I've been working out. Feel my muscle. <laughs> what a big man. Look out, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. <laughs> Check this out, Mama. It's for the dance Friday night. I don't think so. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like it? Oh, I like the material. I just like to see more of it. <laughs> Mama, I bought this with my own money, and I really want it. Oh, I didn't say you couldn't have it. I said you couldn't wear it. <laughs> hey, Mama. Whoa! Where is the rest of that dress? <laughs> now, you see, I didn't say one word. <laughs> oh, man, I give up on women. Excuse me. Don't you have to have a woman in order to give up on them? I'm not talking about that kind of a woman. I'm talking about my algebra teacher, Mrs. Turner. Now, what did Mrs. Turner do to make you write off all the womankind? She went and had a baby on me. She finally delivered. That's nice. Well, what she have? I just said a baby. <laughs> Stay with it, Denisha. <laughs> Why are you dressed like a cocktail waitress? <laughs> Shut up. Why are you so upset about losing an algebra teacher anyway? Because Mrs. Turner was the finest teacher I've ever known. She had a total grasp of the subject. She was an excellent communicator. She gives you a B for showing up and an A if you can spell your name right. We all know you got a B. <laughs> <laughs> and to make matters worse, our new teacher is a nightmare named Mr. Gordon. First thing he does is set up an alphabetical seat and chart. Well, what's so bad about that? I went from a sweet spot next to the lovely Lisa Hicks to the nasty-smelling neighborhood of Lester Vance. <laughs> oh, son, stop. You're gonna make Mama cry. Fine. Mock my pain. <laughs> oh, come on, Jerome. You're just gonna have to make the best of it until Mr. Turner gets back. Oh, but that's gonna be six whole months. I mean, why does the woman need all that time anyway? I mean, she had the baby. She's done. Now let's get back to work. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Sensitive Man, but a new mother wants to be with her child. Yeah, it take time for a woman's body to recover. But six months? Jerome, you obviously don't appreciate what the female body goes through to bring forth an untrustworthy and ungrateful child into this world. So let me put it in terms that you can understand. Now, let's say you shooting some hoops with your homie and your boy Otis blocks your shot. He blocks your shot so hard the basketball goes down your throat. Now, you know that basketball has got to come out somewhere. <laughs> Are you following me, child? Yeah, mama. <laughs> How long did it take you to recover after you had me? Who said I did? <laughs> I've been working hard, two jobs every day. Giving time to my children, showing them the way. With God on my side, keeping me in line. I don't worry about a thing, it's gonna be fine. We know you got it. Got my family. From about your third rib down, it's okay. <laughs> You're saying this top is too revealing, right? Look, Denisha, let me tell you something. Boys your age are very nosy, and Linda is no angel. Now, you wear that to the dance, and I guarantee you all night you'll be talking to the top of Linda's head. <laughs> well, I'm willing to risk that. Excuse me? Are we on a collision course? Because if we are, guess who swerves? <laughs> Now, you get upstairs and put that nice little chemise under that. Chemise? It's gonna spoil the whole effect. You got that right. <laughs> you haven't had dinner yet, have you? 
No, we're just about ready to. Why? Well, I made my special meatloaf for Charles, and the big-hearted fool took one look at it and said, let's not be selfish, let's take it to your sister. <laughs> That's right, we thought we'd come over and spread the bounty. <laughs> What's in this, Lynette? <laughs> oh, Chef never gives away her secrets. <laughs> well, I don't need all of the ingredients, just the one that's making it foam. <laughs> that's nothing. You should have heard what it was doing at our house. <laughs> well, let's put this meatloaf aside so it can calm down. Okay, I guess we have to start with yours then. <laughs> Hi, Mama. Why don't you set two plates for your aunt and uncle? Okay. Alanette didn't bring any food, did she? Not to worry. Nobody with two legs will be eating it. Hi, Alanette. Hi, Uncle Charles. Hey. Hey, Denisha. What's in that pan? <laughs> Man, an entire afternoon down the drain. I could have been shooting hoops, playing video games, or just quietly enjoying my youth. But no, instead I had to waste my time on a bunch of math problems that will never serve a purpose in my life. Oh, come on, baby. If that teacher's making you work too hard, too bad! <laughs> Mama, you don't understand. The man has gone too far. Now he's causing an uprising. Yeah, I heard there was some serious rottiness today with you and that bunch of fools you run with. Is that true, Jerome? No way, Mama. I was merely an observer. Good. Did you wash your hands? Sort of. <laughs> Denisha, take your brother upstairs and wash his hands. You know, Thea, your garden has something that my meatloaf needs. A shovel? <laughs> no, those bell peppers. Come on, let's go pick some. Okay. So what happened in class? Man, Mr. Gordon's getting worse. First, he gives us another pop quiz. Then he makes us shut all the windows, even though it's a thousand degrees in there and we just came in from P.E. Just thinking about it is making my eyes burn. <laughs> well, we weren't going to take this lie down. Now, Mr. Gordon found himself on the receiving end of some classic teacher tear tactics. Oh, like what? Well, the first shot was fired by Otis in the form of a spit wire to the back of the head. <laughs> spit wires? Now, doesn't that just take you back? <laughs> Yeah, of course, in our day, we didn't have any of those fancy plastic straws. We had the old-fashioned paper ones. And once they started to decompose, you didn't know where your next shot was going to land. <laughs> what? Hey, you want something that gives you a little imagination, a little wit? I give you the synchronized coffee fit. Especially effective during the winter. You know, the heavy phlegm months. Good. A seasonal. A year-round enjoyment. Now, you can't beat the raw power of the after-lunch belch bombardment. <laughs> well, you know, I guess that's amusing for the three seconds it lasts, but if you want to give the teacher a day he'll remember, you gotta go with the super glue on the chair. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, glue on the chair. <laughs> oh, you did that? No, but I sure laughed my butt off when Otis did. <laughs> you should have seen Mr. Gordon try to chase him around the room with a chair stuck to his pants. Check it out. <laughs> 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 So you say you enjoyed that, did you, son? Just for one brief moment before overwhelming guilt set in. Well, Jerome, let Mama ease your mind, because guilt is a horrible burden for a young man to bear. So starting tomorrow, you're going to march into that classroom and apologize to Mr. Gordon for your disrespectful, rowdy behavior. Apologize? Why me? I didn't do anything. I believe you said you laughed your fool behind off. That's enough for me. Well, hey, I can't help it, Mom. I was born with a hair-trigger sense of humor. <laughs> but, well, before you fire off another round, we're gonna put a silence on that bad boy. <laughs> you go to school to learn not to be entertained. So I'll expect a report on your heartfelt apology. You got that? Yeah, Mama. Good. And, Charles, thank you for passing on your golden legacy of buckethead behavior. Come on, Phil. These kids know I was just talking. I never really did any of that stuff. And let me tell you that the kids who did never amounted to a hill of beans. Okay, let's eat. Okay, it's payback time. Everybody know the plan? Yeah, yeah. you got it. Good. Otis, how do we know Mr. Gordon's gonna tell somebody to shut the window? Because he always does bone head. The guy hates air. Now, we all volunteer and whoever Gordon picks is the man. Riddick here is going to be outside. Hey, I don't know about this, man. But you got a problem, Jerome? Well, yes, I do. 
Where's the bold stroke? The clever ingenuity? The stunning surprise? <laughs> Got a better plan? Tell him. Here it is. We strut up to Gordon as a posse, right? Look him hard in the eyes. And without flinching, we apologize. <laughs> what? Now, I know it's a little bit different. But see, that's the beauty of it. See, he'll think we're on his side. Then, in the future, when he least expects it, bam! We hit him with everything we got, bruh. How far in the future we talking about, bruh? I don't know. A month? Six months? Maybe even a year. A year? Now we'll be out of this class by then. Speak for yourself, man. <laughs> Anybody interested in Jerome's plan? Nah. No. You're whack. Hey, here comes Gordon. Uh, Mr. Gordon. Good morning, sir. That remains to be seen. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute? About what? Well, about yesterday. I believe my policy is clear. If you want to meet with me after school is the time. As soon as everybody is settled, we're going to have a little pop quiz. Another one? If you've done your homework and you know the material, you have nothing to fear. You sit down. Okay, but I just want to... I said take a seat, Mr. Terrell. Do you have a problem with English as well as math? Well, Mr. Gordon... Go! And shut the window on your way. <laughs> Today, Mr. Terrell. Yes, Mr. Gordon. Just get a rope and hang yourself right now. Hey, I tried to apologize, but Gordon got me so mad, something in me just snapped. Well, when Mama gets wind of this, a whole lot more of you is going to get snapped. <laughs> That's why Mama can't get wind of this. Hello, you've reached the Jarrell residence. If you're calling for the family, press one now. <laughs> to leave a message for Miss Thea Terrell, who will be out of town indefinitely, press two. To reach the beauty salon, press three. Uh, one moment while I connect you. Hello, Styles by Thea, Lynette speaking. <laughs> no, I don't think we do that bikini wax thing, honey. <clears throat> All right, bye. All right, Jerome, what was that business with the phone? Nothing, Uncle Charles. Don't give me that, Jerome. I know you're trying to dodge somebody. He's trying to keep his algebra teacher from contacting Mama. Oh, I'm guessing something got in the way of that humble apology you were going to make. Uncle Charles, I was a victim Never of... mind, son. It's not important. My advice is you tell your Mama now because she'll find out anyway. I mean, look, think of it like this. Your Mama's a hurricane, and you're a beachfront property. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's going to be damage. <laughs> But you want to keep it to a minimum. No, I hear you, Uncle Charles. And you're right. I've just got to come clean and accept the consequences. <laughs> Hello, you've reached the Terrell residence. Charles, I didn't know you were here. Oh, uh, I just came over to pick up what was left of uh, Lynette's meatloaf. You know how it's always better the next day. <laughs> Let me help him with that. Jerome, did you do what you had to do today? You should have seen me, Mama. I was right on it with the man. It was just him and me. Did he accept your apology? Well, he did it not accept my apology. Jerome, your answer strikes me as a little bit evasive. So I will rephrase the question. Did you apologize? I tried to, Mama, but he wouldn't listen. Then Otis had this whole thing playing with the, with the window and then the hand and the fake blood and all them kids were laughing. Oh, I've had enough. I've had enough. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Mr. Gordon. Oh. Somehow I knew this would be you. Mm -hmm. I'll be delighted. I'll see you tonight. Bye. Well, congratulations. Thanks to you and your little friends, Mr. Gordon is holding a parents' meeting tonight. So I trust I'll be in an even worse mood than I'm in right now. So what do you say we hold off on your punishment till I get back? <laughs> oh, you must be Mr. Gordon. No, I'm James Fletcher, Robin's father. Oh, the Robin. 
that had to go complain to the teacher when my son was trying to liven things up with a little harmless fun. Now, what's so bad about one of these? <laughs> you must be Otis's father. Yeah, well, how did you know? It's not everyone who can light up the room. <laughs> oh, well, now, who might you be? Thea Terrell, Jerome's mother. Oh, the boy who's responsible for this little get-together. Yes, my Robin, who had nothing to do with all this, told me all about it. Well, I'm mighty sorry for the trouble that Jerome caused, but I'm not half as sorry as he's going to be when I get through with him. Well, give him an extra pop for me because I'm missing all his game. <laughs> this teacher dragging us all down here just because kids act up a little. Yeah, what he should do is throw the troublemakers like your son out of class. Then the kids who want to learn can't. Oh, well, I see. It's no secret where Robin inherited the bug up her sweet patootie from. <laughs> I resent that. I'll tell you what I resent. My son used to get all A's in algebra. He came home with a C minus on his last test. Mr. Gordon seems to think he's teaching at Harvard. Now, this guy's got to go. As much as I hate to agree with him, he's right. I wish Gordon would go back to where he came from. Well, I disagree, Mr. Fletcher. Now, you seem to think that only good little boys and girls deserve an education. Anyone who messes up, well, we just throw them out of school. That's just what this country needs. More adults with an eighth grade education and a bad attitude. Now, I didn't say... Oh, I know what you said. And as for you, Mrs. Wilkerson, how dare Mr. Gordon give your son bad marks just for getting the wrong answer? <laughs> you tell him, girlfriend. <laughs> Which leads us to you, Mr. Roma. Why did he even bother to become a teacher if he couldn't handle a few spitwads in the face? You got an answer for that? Look, Mrs. Terrell, we came down here to get a lecture from the teacher, not from you. That's right. You know, you're not the principal. No, I'm just a mother with four kids who needs all the help she can get. And as far as I'm concerned, any man who won't settle for anything but the best for my child is on my side. Well, he is just too tough on those kids. I mean, I want my son to go on to college, and he can't get in there with a C in algebra. He can't stay in there unless he can do algebra. Now, listen, people, I don't know if you've noticed, but here lately, our schools just aren't cutting it. And the main reason is because good people don't want to teach anymore. Now, we have a good teacher. We don't want to support him. Now, if I was going to build the perfect teacher, he'd demand respect and attention in his classroom. And he'd expect those kids to study and know their stuff. And he wouldn't be in such an all-fire hurry to kick them out if they didn't get it right. He'd be a lot like Mr. Gordon. Good evening. I'm Mr. Gordon. But he looked like Denzel Washington. <laughs> Mr. Gordon? Yes, Trump? I know your policy is to see students only after school, but I thought... I'll make an exception. I hear you met with my mother last night. Yes, she's some lady. Must be quite amusing growing up in your house. <laughs> Yeah, it's nothing but yucks. So what can I do for you this morning? Well, Mr. Gordon, I'd like to talk to you about yesterday. Now, I don't know if you remember this or not, but there was this little incident with the hand. The hand? The hand? Oh, you mean the severed hand. What about it? Well, I just wanted to apologize. I was out of line. No, Jerome, talking out of turn is out of line. Feigning dismemberment is sick, twisted, and possibly satanic. <laughs> Nevertheless... Apology accepted. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Jerome, one more thing. Yes, sir? Your mother stayed after the meeting last night, and we had a very interesting talk. About what? Well, I may know a lot about mathematics, but I may have something to learn about handling kids. And your mother was able to give me a few valuable pointers. You mean you're going to start acting like her? Well, that's foolish, sir. <laughs> Don't worry, Jerome. Your mother's just trying to help me bridge the communication gap I seem to be having with my students. So as of today, I will be available before and after school for anyone who's having problems with their homework. <laughs> There'll be no more keeping the window closed on hot days. That's it? No, she also mentioned a technique called body slamming. <laughs> but I'm sure that won't be necessary. <laughs> You know, Mr. Gordon, you're a deeply funny man, and I look forward to our new and more laid-back relationship. Don't push it, Jerome. I still expect you to study hard and do your homework. And be prepared for plenty of pop quizzes. Yes, sir. And to behave properly in class. Any more stunts like yesterday's, and you will find yourself spending quality time with the principal, understood? Understood. Well, then what do you say we shake and uh, put all this behind us? Sure. Oh, 
Baby, you look beautiful. Well, I think it's weak. <laughs> Let me talk to you. Now, I know those other girls are wearing that fly girl stuff, but why do you think that is? Because you're not there, Mama. <laughs> well, that may be true, but mostly because it's for attention. And you're at the age where dressing like that can get you attention you may not necessarily want. Mama, I did want that attention. <laughs> I wanted Leonard to see me in a different way. And he would have, too. And so would every other boy in that room. And it might make you and Leonard uncomfortable, and you wouldn't want that, would you? I guess not. But won't Linda be checking out those fly girls, too? Well, that's possible, but I'd like to think that Linda's a gentleman. And a gentleman is always more intrigued by what's hidden than what's revealed. Oh, Mama, that's deep. <laughs> I'm a deep mama. <laughs> <laughs> that's my girl. <clears throat> that's Linda. I gotta go. Be a good girl now. Okay. Mama, I don't know what Denise is so excited about. I'll never want to go out on a date. Never say never, baby. Okay, maybe I'll go to a movie or even a dance. But that kissing stuff is definitely out of the question. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure about that kissing. Why? Because you're going to have to fight him off because you're so cute and cuddly <laughs> and handsome. <laughs> Who closed this? Ah, fresh air. What a beautiful day. What's this, nobody on the basketball courts? Oh, no wonder. So late in the afternoon. <laughs> man, I'm wasting my youth in detention. Did I not say apologize to the man? Yeah, you should have listened to him. Yo, I said I was sorry. I kind of like sitting here. Shut up. Shut up! Gentlemen, gentlemen, relax. Just think, there's only one more week of this. Isn't this like...